Welcome back. Here we are on part six of this Ronda build. I think this is going to be the last video you'll see. Yeah, that's right. Look at this. We got the logo going on. And this is how I do it. We're going to be doing a little solar res here. Get that thing uh, under a nice layer of uh, polyester acrylic. Uh, what do you call that stuff? Resin. Yeah, that's right. That's what they call it. But we're using the solar res, which means it's going to be cured by UV lights. A lot quicker than waiting for uh, the chemicals to take over and, you know, less chemicals to use. So there we go. Then we pull that back a little bit. So we want to get that little sticker under some resin. So we got that. And here we're going to add a little amber to the mix. This just gives it such a, such a lovely color on wood, you know, and that gives it that uh, age-old appearance. Mix, see that a little cap full of acetone just to get it a little loosened up. We don't want it super thin. We're not spraying this on. We're actually brushing it on. But we want that that feel that you get with a wipe on poly where it self levels and that's what we're going to do here. So if you notice I'm just using a chip brush and I don't have to worry about those brush marks because I'm going to let it sit even on five times speed didn't look like it and we did some editing but actually let that sit for about you know five six minutes before hitting it with the lights that just levels it out. And then we sand it to get it even more level or, or, or leveled just flat that's what we're looking for. That's right, it's that time when James puts a microphone to his face and starts mumbling a bunch of nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, check this out. Good old handwritten uh, numbers. Yeah. You know, it, it's only a matter of time before we actually have these all machine printed. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping uh, in the future folks will look at these old handwritten ones. Someday hopefully people will see that and go, hey, that's cool. So here we are speaking of leveling. So we're getting the uh, that uh, urethane, that clear coat has been sitting on there long enough to have set in really well and is now uh, malleable. So we're gonna mallet with sandpaper. We're not using a mallet. We're not gonna beat up your guitar here, Craig. Don't worry. As you can see, uh, basically I started with uh, 1200 grit and then worked my way up to as much as 7,000 uh, on the machine and then I've got a 12,000 hand paper that I'm going to use. So we're going to get this thing polished. It's going to be shiny. Uh, Craig wants a nice high gloss finish on this and that's what we're going to do our best to give him. So see, I'm using a, a mix of tools here. I'm using a little bit of the random orbital sander, mostly because I got the papers for it, so it's cool. But the thing you got to uh, look out for is it doesn't fit everywhere, so there you got to grab the, the hand pieces. And even still, it's good to go over where the random orbital went, take it with hand and just kind of make sure you don't get any of those squirrely marks in there. One last episode of you watching me sand. Isn't this wonderful? You probably saw that little spray bottle right there. Yes, I do uh, do this sometimes wet, but I don't spray the guitar. That's a no-no in my book. And I don't dip it because that's also a no-no. You just want a little spray bottle. just, And then here we're using the air hose. Blow out some of that dust. Last thing you want to be doing at this point in the game is to start polishing and you're actually just rubbing in old sand sanded product and or just junk you don't want to do that so here i'm using my little uh, quick spinner this thing runs at like 15 million rpm or something i don't know it's super fast so i usually wait till i get to the really super high grit i think that's probably 3,000 i was burning on that thing That's it. it. Didn't hold up there long enough. You guys got this on a big enough screen, you probably saw it. But like I said, one way or the other, I'm getting up to about 12,000 here. Uh, my hand paper. I don't have to go this high because we are going to use a rubbing compound, and it usually takes out grit of 1,500. So I don't have to go, but I just like it. The, the less 
uh, less you make the chemical work, the less chemical you need to work it. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to say is I'm trying to get this as organically rubbed and polished before I actually grab a chemical. Put the body away. Let's get back to the neck. So now we're working on the frets. If you recall, we installed the fretboards. We did uh, install the frets into the fretboard. We got all the neck going. We even got, you know, the label on there. We've got the serial number and all that stuff written down. But now we got to do the frets themselves. Now we haven't done any leveling and we haven't done any polishing on the frets. All the contouring, all the shaping, making them crowned and... Uh, making sure that those ends don't cut our fingers when we slide up and down the neck. All that stuff's got to be done right now. And so we do the old blue pen trick, or I should just say felt tip pen. I like blue because it looks cool. And what I'm doing right here is any frets that are lower than the others right now, as I rub this uh, sanding block over, you will see them as blue. And all the higher ones will now be shiny chrome again. So what we want is them all to be shiny metal and take them down to they're all nice and level. So again, it's the, the age old thing with guitar making. We take this perfectly round item, make it square, and then make it round again. So that's what we're doing. So we're flattening these down to they're all nice one level, checking it with this little tool here. It's a rocker. Span it over three frets and if the one in the middle is higher than the others, it's going to rock from one into the other. And now I'm doing what they call a fall away. It's about the 14th fret on back towards where the, the bridge would be. You just want those to be just a little bit lower than all the others. It just makes it so that you can get the action lower in where most people play their fretboard, which is going to be up near the nut. So this just gives a little fall away. See, I'm marking those there. Obviously, I had a high fret or two. So I'm just marking those, and I'm going to make that blue ink disappear again come back recheck it looks all good now we're going to do the whole fretboard and you know you may have noticed on the frames before that it had that block taped across where the zero fret is that's because I didn't want to quite get that to the same level as all the other frets yet I didn't want that to judge all the other frets it doesn't hurt to have that zero fret just a little bit higher than the others but it doesn't, you don't want it too high because otherwise that defeats the purpose of having a zero fret. Might as well have a poorly carved nut. And now what we're doing is I'm taking a triangular file that's been flattened on one end so it doesn't grind too much into the fretboard. And what I'm doing is, is I'm making those thick lines thin. And that's going to get a nice rolled edge on there, which I'm going to also do by using the sandpaper trick. Now I've got uh, 120 all the way up to 600 that I'm going back and forth along the frets. As you see it's also uh, sanding the fretboard as well as making those frets nice and round so they're not too pointy on top. It just gives a nice uh, even roundness. And this also takes care of those ends. So the one thing we want is a very comfortably uh, playing neck. And we're just working it back and forth, doing exactly what our shop teacher used to tell us not to. What shop teacher is always telling you, sand with the grain. Here we are sanding against the grain. Obviously, because of the amount of space that we have available, it's hard to do uh, anything other than that. Look at the screwdriver trick. Watch this. Oh, you see what I'm doing there? It's given a nice worn feel to the edges so they're not too sharp. Uh, one of the compliments I get a lot from people is they say that my necks feel like a nice worn-in guitar's neck would and not a brand new one that needs to be worn in. So that's what we're doing, we're just going along with that. As you can see, working it, working it, working it. So now, once again, trying to get the nice little uh, ball bearing look on the ends here. Just rounding those things once more. Lots of work back and forth, and a little oil doesn't hurt anybody. Here we go, get some oil back in there. Use the clarifying solution. This is going to get that oil to wick even better. And you can see in the lower 
uh, forward left hand corner there my uh, nut butter jar that's actually filled with my own homemade shellac so it's just a back and forth ritual here of oil shellac oil shellac see the fan I got in the back room blowing on me it's because it's a pretty warm day so this stuff is drying really quickly um, still takes a few days to cure so there is going to be a few days between doing this and the next step that you'll see although you get the luxury of it all being edited down in one 20 minute video that's a little moonshine Dean had to clean my gloves because as you're doing this it just you do get build up on the gloves and the last thing you want to do is put a bunch of smoogy spots on your neck or whatever wood project you're working on so I just clean the gloves every once in a while in the old days we used to toss the gloves grab and do ones but they're hard to come by these days so we clean them and keep going and again just a back and forth ritual of sanding Rubbing in oil, rubbing in shellac, rubbing the clarifying solution, just back and forth, back and forth until we get a nice uh, finish that we like. A lot of what we're doing is, uh, is sanding the wood down to a degree as well as filling it with the uh, product and then burnishing. So we're actually used bringing out the best of the wood itself. Now here I just found a spot that, you know, if you want to see a spot that didn't get sanded, right, all you got to do is put some product in it and it'll show up. So I'm just touching up some spots that, and it's just, that's the, that's the way we do it, folks. Back and forth, back and forth. And what you're seeing is uh, several hours here edited down, and you can see all the cross-editing, and, you know, they're going about five times speed on the video to begin with, and still cross-editing it for you. Changing angles, because there are times where I've walked away, go do something else, let it, the product set in for a bit. And you just saw the paste wax. That means that's the end of it. This is what they say. Once you wax, you can't go back. Okay, so here's a little metal polish. Watch what I do here. Isn't that gross? I'm getting that fretboard all black. What are you doing, James? You're messing it up. Yes, I am. But nothing a little coconut oil won't fix. Ta -da! Look at that. And, of course, I would not do this with a raw maple fretboard. <laughs> you can get away with it, these darker fretboards. Especially the walnut, ebony, that type of thing. Look at that thing. Ooh, it's pretty. Time for some tuners. And, yes, a little product that Solarize did get into my tuner holes, which were barely cut uh, right anyway. So that means you got to get the little reamer tool and kind of clean up the holes. Now these hip shot tuners, I could, I actually, when I set it up, I had these all set to do the old fashioned way with the screws, but I really like these mounting plates. Um, they hold everything in just real nicely. And the way I set up my, my 12 string headstocks, it's perfect because I have three in a line going straight, then three in a line going straight the other direction from the bevel. So even though the headstock is curved, the, the tuners actually go straight in a line three at a time. So these little mounting plates are perfect. Look at all that crud that's on that towel from that I scraped out of inside those tuner holes. Ta-da! And here we are back to the body. This is one of my favorite parts. This is where we get to load things. Now, traditionally, part of this uh, loading would include some soldering. I think I've got very little soldering on this at all. I think only because I prefer the, the outlet jack or input jack. So waxing the screws, we're mounting the bridge. Always good idea putting screws in, um, especially when you got very tight tolerances already on the holes. These holes were pre-drilled, so you probably got a little product in there. So just to make sure everything goes in nice and smoothly, put a little wax on there. It also helps them to grip once they are in. Yeah, so the here he is. There's this jack here. Now you can see just to the right of the stand, see that electric cable coming down that's actually my soldering iron so I I am getting a hole all nice and reamed out here because I'm putting in um, a barrel type jack I prefer that for what we're doing tightening it up and that's the only soldering I'm doing uh, Craig wanted to go with these uh, GFS pickups and they happen to have um, 
They're quick connects. It's really cool. So it's all plug-in. No soldering on my part was necessary, except like I said, I wanted to use this barrel jack. So I just desoldered the jack that came with their harness and put it in. Yeah, even the ground tab was a quick connect. And now we're running those plug-ins. See, they're like little uh, eighth-inch plugs. They snap in. And we're putting the bridge saddles back on. I'm putting them all the way back because when it comes time to intonate, it's a lot easier loosening those up than it is tightening them. So I put them all the way back. And now the cover plate. Now it was a tight fit to begin with before we added paint. So now I'm just making sure that it, it fits, just filing and sanding, trimming it down, doing little bits at a time. And now I'm using the uh, store-bought one to help line up my holes and drill in the holes for the screws. Putting a little inset, the screws in, yeah. All right, now it's time to put on the knobs. Look at that. Ooh, he's so pretty. You know, I like to get the uh, neck set on, get everything lined up before I put the pickups in. These pickups are going to have the frames, and there's a little wiggle room, uh, which also means uh, I can make adjustments to make sure they're square, but it also means that they can be off square unless I do them a little bit at a time. And so I'm just making minor adjustments here. I'm just making sure that the neck's setting right with the saddles and everything looks nice and flat. Now I'm getting, uh, I already had taken a uh, pre-slotted nut and slotted it a little bit myself because this is really just a spacer nut since I've got the zero fret. But now I'm going back and dialing them down a little more, making it so that the nut doesn't interfere with the intonation. Just getting those those grooves a little deeper. Real easy stuff. Line up, make sure, like I said, that they're deep enough and then just getting them a little more where they need to be. If you're uh, doing these guitars and you're, uh, whether you're doing kits or building your own from scratch like this, whatever, you know, a decent set of nut files is really, really a good thing. Don't be afraid just to spend a bit, um, but you also don't have to spend, you know, a million dollars a set either. Just get a nice, decent set. And we're stringing this baby up. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm getting the outer edges first, so I'm getting all the, the base string outers and then the treble string outers done, and then that way I can line it up. And one of the beauties of having a bolt-on neck is that you can make the little tweak adjustments like I'm doing here. I'm just tugging and pulling, loosening and tightening those uh, screws in the back just to get it just right, just set up just the way I want. And then I could put the pickups in. Yeah, you know, getting the pickups in, getting it all set up just right means a uh, little bit of last minute adjustments to that scratch plate. Once you get that all right, now we're screwing the, the pickup frames down. And I, I have blasted through a lot of this footage. I didn't think you guys needed to see me drill every single hole. Didn't think you needed to see me pull every single string out of the envelopes, you know. But uh, if you want to see full-time footage, just let me know. But trying to keep these uh, little segments as brief as possible and still show you just how much work goes to all of it. There's a, a lot of a lot of handwork on these guitars. I happen to be making them from scratch with uh, handheld power tools. But even guys who uh, run CNC machines that, that cut a lot of the wood for them, that's all that thing does is cut the wood. You still got to do all the rest by yourself. And so all the details that you're seeing me do this, it wouldn't matter if that body was made by CNC or not. Um, you know, there's still a lot to do here that is all in the hands of a person or a team. Oh, people, and, you know, here you go. This is what's going 
goes behind guitars. And now it's all the, the final details here. So we actually have a guitar. That thing strums. I played it. Um, intonation still needs to be set up at this point that you're looking at, but I'm done with it now. And I'm just making sure that nut doesn't, like I said, it was a pre-done pre nut, so it's a little wide. I'm just trimming it to fit. And then use a little shellac to cover up the, the wood that I may have scraped. And I'm putting these things on, and there goes my cameraman job. Yeah, pretty bad shot there. Believe me, I'm, I'm screwing in the strap pegs. You just can't see it. Well, they're on, so that must have been what I did. Yeah, remember that guy that I had in my apron? From the, what was that, the first episode? Maybe the second? Yep, I saved it for a reason. This is it. Now we're going to use that little uh, nut access hole for the truss rod. What do they call that? that yeah. A little... We're going to cut that. Tune in again for the, uh, the video where I demo this guitar, but uh, do know that some of the music that you're hearing is from Farm Truck, the band who will be playing this guitar. And the little bit at the end here, this is actually the guitar. This is uh, the guitar, and it's not done with any fancy recording equipment. I just recorded it on my phone and laid it in here. So there you have it, folks. Again, more hand sanding. Shaping, sanding, filing, getting it all set up just the way it is. These things aren't magically cut on their own. Someone's got to cut these things and, and do this. Make adjustments. Now I'm realizing it's right about the same amount as a popsicle stick to cut off to get it that final size. And sure enough, there it is. Now we don't want it to move while I uh, mount it, so good old blue tape to the rescue. Get a little starter hole with the punch. Drill. Shape. Screw it. Please click the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Share this with folks. Thank you again for tuning in to DudeCraft Guitars.